All right, let's talk a little bit about transformations. Um, so there are three main types of transformations. We have reflections, where we, you know, we we find we get something like this and we flip it in the plane so that it ends up like that. We have dilations, which stretch and squeeze. Um, another dilation might have been something like this. And we have translations where we just shift our graph around. You know, we move it from this point. We can move it upwards or we can move it sideways. So here are some types of transformations. So um, we can have dilations in the x-axis or dilations in the y-axis, and that changes what the meaning is, right? <laughs> Sorry. Um, a dilation by factor of a from the y-axis affects our x values, right? What I like to think about is we're dilating it from the x-axis, right? We're, we're moving it away from the x-axis or moving it towards the y-axis not away from the x-axis. We're moving it away from the y-axis or towards the y-axis, right? So all we're doing here is really affecting our x-values. Um, other words that we can, you know, or other ways we can say that is dilation by a factor of a in the direction of the x-axis. Um, a dilation by factor b from the x-axis um, is, you know, changing um, the distance from the y-values or changing the distance from the graph from x, right? So this affects our x-values. So from x affects y values, and from y affects x values. Um, another thing to note is a reflection in the y-axis affects y values, I mean x values, sorry. So, you know, if we have a graph like this and we reflect it in the y-axis, we'll end up with a graph here. So, you know, our x values have changed. If we reflect it in the x-axis, you can see here that the y values have changed, but the x values have stayed the same. Translations in the positive and negative direction um, only affects y values. So translation in y affects y. Translation in x affects x. So, um, you know, if I'm translating this graph up in the y-axis, it'll look like that. Down in the y-axis, we'll look at this. In the x-axis, we'll be moving it from side to side. Okay, have a go at answering this. Um, and I'll go through the solution. this you should always be done in this order um, and you know again why right um, like don't take my word for it we saw why that happens right so if the dilations you know you can have a read of that yourself but you know whenever we apply a dilation or reflection that translation is going to be shifted so that's really it all right so there's a couple ways of actually figuring out our um, dilations, reflections, translations, and that jazz. Um, one of the ways is via the coordinate method. So the coordinate method um, is when we apply these transformations to certain coordinates, and then we like sort of map it out, um, and then we flip it back to um, like in, like the normal coordinates. So we sub it into the equation. That probably won't make sense until you know we do an example, but yeah. So it takes longer. Um, and has a lot less uh, room for errors. I use this method a lot um, just because I found it a bit easier for me um, to like visualize things, but yeah. Okay, so first we apply our dilation from the y-axis. Um, again, that's a change in x, so we apply it to the x. A dilation in the, in, um, in a dilation from the x-axis, and so we apply that to y, right? A reflection in x, so um, our y-axis will change, and a reflection in y, so we, you know, we apply a negative to both, and a translation in C up and D right. Um, right is always going to be left because on our, right, right, wait, that does not make sense, sorry, I don't know what I said. Right is always going to be positive because on our, um, 
sorry, let me just draw this out. Um, on our um, Cartesian plane, the right side is going to be positive and the left side is negative, right? And up is positive and down is negative. So whenever you see a translation in C up, um, you're going to plus C. And whenever you see something to the right, you're going to do plus D. If it's to the left, then you do minus. But yeah, that's important to keep in mind. Um, I should probably get rid of this before it covers the other working out. Alright, so um, next we create this new variable called x prime, and we equate it to this new x coordinate, and then we also do the same for y. Okay, after we do this, we can now substitute this um, and resolve for our normal x values. So we do x, um, you know, we equate this and then we resolve um, for x, and then we now substitute this into our original equations. So this is um, the substitution we make into y, and this is the substitution we've made into x here. So hopefully that makes sense. It's a bit finicky. Because, you know, there's so many things that can go wrong here. And then even when you substitute it in and solving for everything, that can also make it go, you know, further wrong. Um, or make it stuffed up a little bit more. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, the other way of doing it is known as the replacement method. Um, the reason I didn't like this one is because it requires a lot more memorization and I don't memorize things that much. Um, and it's sort of derived from this. It's derived from this, but you just, instead of like, um, you know, having to do everything manually, you just memorize all of these. So you memorize that a dilation um, from the Y is going to change the X, but it's going to be one over A. So you, whenever you see a dilation from, or dilation A from Y axis, um, you'll see, you'll have to apply like one over A to X. And that's because here you can see that, you know, it's one over A when it gets applied to X. So it's a bit strange like that. Um, the reflection in the X is still the same and reflection in the Y is still the same. Um, when we change Y um, or when we dilate from B, that doesn't change the, um, you know, we don't have to reciprocate the A or we'll find the reciprocal. Um, and whenever we, you know, go right, um, we have to put a negative. Whenever we go left, we put a positive instead. Um, but that doesn't change anything for y. Um, so it's just like flipping everything for x, really. Since when you're going right, you're going, you know, minusing d. When you're dilating a from the y-axis, you're dividing it by a instead of multiplying it by a. Um, just things like that. Um, but that's why I didn't really like the method, because I thought it was quite um, prone to error. So I didn't use it as much. Um, I just try to get really fast with the coordinate method. Um, but eventually, if you do the coordinate method enough, you will just end up memorizing it anyways. So yeah, practice, just practice, 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 really. All right, um, I'll let you guys have a go at this. Um, I'll give you guys a couple minutes um, to have a go at this one here, and then we'll move on. Just quickly check if the stream is still up. Yeah, it is. Nice.
Alrighty, let's go through this question here. Um, so a function f of x um, is equal to 1 over x undergoes the following transformations. <coughs> um, a reflection in the x-axis, translation 1 up and 1 half right. Okay, using the replacement method, state the transformed function g of x in the form minus a divided by bx plus c plus d, where a, b, c, and d are integers. Okay, cool. All right, so um, the very first thing to note is, is all of this. We sort of need to have this on the forefront of our minds. So dilation from y, so that means I'm going to apply it to, uh, I'm going to apply 1 over half to x and 6 from x. So I'm going to do 6 times f of x. And I'm going to just put f of x, I'm going to do x over 2. Um, they say reflection in the x-axis. Whenever reflection happens in the x-axis, it's applied to y. So I'm going to chuck a negative in the front. Um, translation 1 up and half right. Okay, so keep in mind that that is applied on top, right? Um, because you can see d right, and it was applied very last, and it's still divided by a. So we need to keep that in mind when we do this. So it's going to be x minus 1 over 2. Well, you can't really see that there, but imagine that's a negative 1 over 2 there. Um, and since it's right, I'm going to be subtracting and translation 1 up. So I'm going to do plus 1. All right, so the last thing I need to do is just plug everything in. So it's going to be minus 6 times. Um, when I substitute everything into here, it's going to be... Uh, well, actually, I think the very first... Sorry. The very first step I should probably do is substitute everything into x first. So it's going to be 1 over x minus 1 half divided by 2. Um, and that is going to give me, um, so I right now I have um, x minus 1 half divided by 1 over 2, which is just going to become 2 over x minus 1 half. Um, just because I'm running out of space, I'm going to shorten out my working out. So it's going to be 2 over 2x minus 1 by 2. And I can simplify that to 4 over 2x minus 1. Sorry, there should be a division here, not a subtraction. Okay, cool. So now I've applied all my x transformations. I just need to apply my y ones, right? So I can just put that into here. For 2x minus 1 plus 1. So minus, uh, minus 6 times 4 is going to give me negative 24 over 2x minus 1 plus 1. And I want to leave it in the form of this, right? So I want minus 24 over 2x plus negative 1 plus d. Okay, cool. So that here is our final answer. Sorry, that was very janky. Um, oh, I left out the negative. There should be a negative in the front, though. My bad. Um, yeah, sorry about the, the really messy handwriting, uh, but hopefully that makes sense. Um, hopefully I haven't made any mistakes here either. Um, feel free to shoot me an email if I have, um, and I'll try correct it. Um, just in the interest of time, I'm not going to spend too much time, um, just sticking around and trying to like double check and triple check if I've made, um, any mistakes. Ideally in an exam, what I would do is after I do all of this or after I do every single step, I'd double and triple check just to see if I've got it right. Um, and only then would I move on. But, you know, just because in the interest of time, um, I'm just going to move on to the um, break so then, you know, you guys can.